All right, one of the questions that's always coming up, in fact, it's a question we're going to have to deal with right at the very beginning, because as, as a Christian, everything I'm going to say has to come from this book, the Holy Bible. I have the New International Version. Now, Muslims are always claiming that this book has been corrupted. They're always saying we have changed it, we have manipulated it, we have uh, uh, added to it, taken away from it. And I don't know of any Muslim yet in all my 25 years of experience that has been able to show me when and where we have corrupted it. That's the first question I ask, when and where? Now, usually they don't know, so let me help, let me help those Muslims who are, who are out there to come up with a, 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 a way of answering that. And the first thing I'm going to say is, let's take the 7th century, the time that this book, this is the Quran here, Quran, Bible, right? These are the two books of the, the faith. I always make sure my Quran is a little bit smaller than my Bible to show you which one, which one I think is more important. Now, according to Muslims, this book was compiled in the 7th century. So, was this book, the Bible, corrupted before the time of the 7th century or after the time of the 7th century? Now, you're going to tell me it's been corrupted before. If that is the case, go back to your own book. Go back to the Quran and go back to these references. And I'm going to give you them in numbers. Surah 10, Ayah 94. That means book 10, verse 94. Surah 21, Ayah 7. If you look at both those, 1094 and Surah Ayah, I'm sorry, Surah 21, 7, they both say, if you have any question, go to the people of the book. Go to the people of this book. Surah 29 is even better. Surah 29, Ayah 46 says, do not argue with the Christians. You're not to argue with me. I use that one all the time at Speaker's Corner. It's great. You're not to argue with me. Why? Because we have been given the Taurat in the Injil. That means the Torah of Moses. In the Injil, that means the, the Gospel of Jesus. As a sign for you. Surah 4, Ayah 136. That's even better. Surah 4, Ayah 136 says, and I'll quote it. Oh, ye Muslims, go to that which has been given to you from before you. Those scriptures that have become before you. That's this book here. They are signs for you. And then Surah 5, Ayah 46 and 47, then also Ayah 68, says to me, O ye Christians, go back to that which God has given you. That's this book here. For they are signs for you. So now I've just given you five references. Surah 1094, Surah 217, Surah 2946, Surah 4136, 5, 46 and 47, and verse 68, telling you Muslims to come back to this book. Now why in the world would your Allah tell you in this book, in your, corrupt, in your Quran, to go to a corrupted scripture? To go to something that has been changed, that has been manipulated, that has been basically abrogated by this book? It doesn't make sense. Usually my Muslim friends will always say, well, okay, okay, it's not before the 7th century. It comes after the 7th century. Now, I love it when they say that. Because if they believe that this book has been corrupted after the 7th century then they're going to have to deal with all the manuscript evidence. There's an enormous amount of manuscript evidence. Oh, my goodness. What do we have? We have about 24,000 manuscripts, a good 5,300 uh, Greek manuscripts, 10,000 Latin Vulgates, uh, another 9,000, over 9,000 uh, from in other versions. Now, they're not all early. I know, I know. They're not all early. In fact, there's the first, the earliest 230 are the most authoritative one. The earliest 230 are, uh, are written before the 6th century, but that's still 100 years before... The Quran was put together. So that's a good bit of time. And it's those 230 that we're looking at. Manuscripts, such as the Bodmer Papyrus, which is there in Switzerland, or the John Ryland's Manuscript, which is up here in Manchester, both of which have portions of the Book of John from the 2nd century. 2nd century. We're not talking about the 7th, we're talking about the 2nd. You also have the um, Chester Beatty Manuscripts over there in Dublin. In the Chester Beatty Manuscripts, you have all four of portions of the books of uh, the Gospels. You have parts of the book of Acts and also of the book of Revelations, all from the third century. Then if you come right here to London, where I live, go down to the British Library and you'll see the Sinaiticus, the entire New Testament, written in Greek from the fourth century. Right next to it is the Alexandrinus, which is the entire Bible written in Greek from the fifth century. That's 200 years before the Quran even came to existence. So if we had corrupted it after, after, the 7th century, we'd have to go back to every one of those 24,000 manuscripts, 230, which predate the 6th century, all those ones I've just mentioned right now, and change every one of them. But that's not all. We've also got 15,000 translations in 11 different languages. <laughs> now, stop and think. We'd have to go back to every one of those 15,000 in all 11 languages, change every one of them, not know anything about it, and certainly not anybody else know about it. Then we've got about 2,135 lectionaries written in the 6th century. These are liturgy that was taken straight out of Scripture and was 
taken and was used in the church services, the worship services of that time. But you know, we got something better than all of that. Forget about the manuscripts. Forget about the translations. Forget about the lectionaries. We got something even better than that. And that's the early church fathers' quotations. The early church fathers were the guys that were led the church. And what they did is almost immediately they saw that there were all these controversies, these, these people who were writing against the Bible, writing against what was written in the Gospels. And what they did is a very clever thing. Rather than sit there and argue against each one of them, like I'm doing right now uh, to you sitting there and watching this, rather than just argue against them, they just quoted the Bible. They just quoted the New Testament. Because that was the best, uh, basically the best authority they had. And it made sense. So what has happened is there have been two individuals, uh, Sir David Dalrymple and Dr. Jean Burgon, right here in London, have gone through and they've amalgamated, they pulled together as many of these quotations as they could find, and they've come up with 86,000 quotations. Now, Dr. Jean Burgon wanted to find out how many of these quotations predated the 4th century. That means predated the Sinaiticus, which is the earliest of uh, the entire New Testament. And you know what he found? He came up with 36,000 quotations from Oregon, from, uh, from Ignatius, Irenaeus. These were the earliest church fathers predating the 4th century. But he, did, he went one step further. He took these 36,000 quotations and put them in a chronological fashion, starting with Matthew, going all the way to Revelation. When he put them in order, he noticed that he could reproduce the entire 27 books of the New Testament, all verses of all 27 books, except for 11 insignificant verses, before the 4th century. Now stop and think what I've just said. Look and see what, what that means. That means we could reproduce the entire New Testament, all 27 books, except for 11 insignificant verses. There's over 5,000 verses in the, in the New Testament. All of it before the 4th century. That's 300 years before the Quran even came to existence. Where in the world can Muslims say that this has been corrupted? That it's been corrupted even before? They're going to have to go back to their own Quran and dispute with it. If they say it's been corrupted after the 7th century, they're going to have to deal with just the enormous amount of manuscript evidence, 24,000 of them. Translations, 15,000 in 11 languages. Lectionaries, over 2,000. And, of course, the early church fathers' quotations. There's no other piece of literature, secular or sacred, that can make the claim I've just made for our two testament. Please, for heaven's sakes, don't say we have corrupted our scripture unless you can source it. Unless you can answer those two little questions, where and when. I'm still waiting. I know you can't. And that's the great thing about the New Testament. I know it's authoritative. I know it's not, it has not been corrupted. Thank God that he's given this kind of authority that we can stand on.